Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you the basics of GitHub, how to create a repository, how to edit files in it, and how to delete that repository. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with it a little bit more. In this case, I want you to work locally with the files in your repository and sync them with the files that are in GitHub. The whole concept of this of Git and GitHub is that it's a distributed source control system. And one example of that is that GitHub right here has a repository out in the cloud. We're saving things right here in the cloud so other people can access them. We can deploy them to remote servers more easily. But if we want to work locally, we could bring that down, that code down to our local machine, test it locally. Once we have it working, we can then push it back up to the cloud. And we can also pull changes that other people made from the cloud down to our local machine. Let me show you how that works. Uh, I deleted my last repository, so I'm just quickly create a new one here. I'll go to uh, your repositories and click on new. And I'll say owner. This is a quick review. I'll call this Gcast uh, G GitHub demo. How about that? And I don't need a I don't really need any of this stuff. I'm just going to cl click this create repository. None of those are required. And some of the commands are actually shown right here, which you can do. But what I'm going to do is not, not do all these things. Um, I'll show you a very simple way of doing it. So I have a repository here. It's called Gcast GitHub Demo. And one of the important things I want is right here. This bit of code right here. I can copy that to my clipboard here. And then I can use that on my local files. What I'll do is I'm going to launch Visual Studio Code and I will open up a folder. I'll call it uh, C backslash Gcast backslash um, MVC demo like that. Select that. Here, there's nothing in that folder right now. And I could initialize the repository here, but what I want to do is go to the Terminal, say view terminal. You don't really need Visual Studio Code. You can use a different IDE or you can use just use the command prompt for doing these things. But what I want to do is I'm going to clone the repository that's in GitHub. And I do that using git commands. So if I have, let's say git dash dash version, that tells me that I do have git installed. If you don't have git installed, by the way, you probably want to just search for install git and find the a link here git uh, under on github there's an install git options right here that just shows you how to do that it's pretty simple install totally free so let's do that uh, so what i want to do is i want to clone that repository i'm going to say git Every git command starts with the word git, G-I-T, and then there's a command. In this case, it's clone, and then there can be one or more arguments. In this case, the argument is what I copied to my clipboard. It's that location of the GitHub repository right here. I press enter, and it's going to close clone it. There really isn't anything to clone, you see, because it was completely empty. In fact, it has you've cloned an empty repository. But if I say git status, Oh, sorry, I have to change to, if I do ls here, uh, then I want to change to this directory that was created. cd gcast git hub demo. That's, it created the directory that was named after this repository right here. All right, now I want to put something into this repository. And one quick way to put something into it is I'll just, I've got, how you do this is up to you, but I've got the .NET CLI installed here. So I'm going to just say .NET new MVC named Gcast MVC right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And now you see all of these things were created for .NET code. There's a home controller and home pages and so on. Um, so this is an entire application. And now when I do a git status here you see this jcast mvc and everything underneath it shows up and it's untracked what that means is it's not in my local git repository 
it is not being tracked. And I can add that to my local Git repository with a git command. I type git followed by the word add. And then if I want to, I can specify specific files or specific folders, or I can just say dot means everything, you know, or I can say dash a. Dash A is what I'd like to do because that includes not only files that were added, but also files that were deleted and updated. So git add dash A adds everything. It shows everything that it did. And when I do a git status again, here it lists all these files in green. And that tells them, yes, they are added to my GitHub repository, but they are not committed to my GitHub repository. So saving files in Git is always a two-step process. So what I want to do is I want to commit these. I'm going to say git commit dash m. So everything starts with git. Commit is the command. And the, this case is an argument dash m, which is a switch called dash m, which takes as an argument a, a commit message. This commit message, I'll just call it initial revision. So when I, and this is really useful if you have a whole bunch of commits and you want to say, oh, what's that one that I did three weeks ago? There'll be a message on there said, I, I fixed bug number 277 that, that uh, had a spelling error, or I added functionality to allow saving uh, multiple files at once, whatever it is. There'll be some description as to what that commit is. And you'll understand the history of your code base. So let me commit that right here, and it just gives a little output as to what would happen. Now when I do a git status, everything shows as committed. There's nothing there that's untracked. There's nothing that's uncommitted. However, if I look over at my GitHub repository and refresh this, there's still no code in here. And the reason is because everything I've done, I've done on my local machine. I haven't done it in GitHub, but I cloned this repository. So my, my local Git repository is connected. It knows about the GitHub repository, and I could just do a git push right here, and it'll push. And because I'm on a main branch here, you can see that I was I was on branch main locally. Then it will push it to main in the cloud. And what that means is, when I refresh here in GitHub in my repository. Now I have all of these files now in my GitHub repository. I've pushed it, so I'm keeping them in sync. Similarly, if let's say other users are using this, I mean, it's a, a public re repository. If somebody else changes something, I'll make a really simple change in here. Um, maybe I'll add uh, in one of these views. I'll just go into that view right there and edit it and i'll just change this add some exclamation points to that title right here and commit them now i'm out of sync again because github has a change that my local repository does not have and what i can do to keep them in sync is there's another command git pull and I can specify what branch to pull from, but I'm already on the main branch, so that really isn't necessary. So just git pull should be enough. And now when I open up that same file locally, home index, I see that change reflected locally. So this is how we can use our local repositories to keep in sync with a GitHub repository. And if we're working in a team environment, maybe three or four or 500 people might all be working on the same repository, the same code base, and they can all sync with the GitHub repository. That becomes the system of record. They can test things out locally. When they like them, then they push them up and merge them, them with the code in our GitHub repository. This is David. Thank you for watching.